seek recognition. Mr. Chair, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number one, printed in House Report number 118-3, offered by Mr. McGovern of Massachusetts. Pursuant to House Resolution 97, the gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. McGovern, and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Massachusetts. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Chair, I know that some of my colleagues on the other side may think a degree from Google.com makes them a public health expert, but the truth is it, it doesn't. And I'm sick and tired of coming down here to the floor wasting time on anti-vaxxer junk science dug up uh, from the darkest corners of the internet and brought to the House floor. And once again, there should be no surprise to anybody, we are bringing this bill to the floor in which lots of questions have been raised without a single hearing, uh, without a markup. And by the way, the Energy and Commerce Committee today is having a hearing, uh, but unfortunately this bill is not the subject of that hearing because here we are on the House floor. And the amendment I'm offering today is simple. All we're saying is the CDC should uh, continue to have the authority in the future to demand that visitors to the United States show proof of vaccination for diseases other than COVID. It's not complicated. It's not a radical idea. We already require multiple vaccines for people who are immigrating or seeking refuge in this country for diseases like smallpox, polio, measles, and mumps. Why? Because they work. My colleagues on the other side seem to think that if there's a polio or smallpox outbreak in another country, they don't want the CDC requiring proof of vaccination for people traveling from those countries to the United States. But using their logic, um, you know, that's where we're headed. We've wasted two weeks now on these ridiculous anti-vaxxer conspiracy theory bills. Uh, we have members that watched a few YouTube videos and they think they know more about all the medical research than the experts on this subject. Um, they think they know more than all the scientists, all the doctors, and all the public health professionals. Uh, it's embarrassing and quite frankly, it's alarming. But what's even more disappointing is that we have doctors in Congress who shamefully stood in silence while anti-science and anti-safety rhetoric has run rampant. The majority says that this bill doesn't apply to other vaccines. Well, if they believe that, they should vote for this amendment and clarify their intent. intent. So let's just put this out in the open. This bill isn't about COVID vaccines. It isn't uh, about, uh, it, 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 is, it is about disinformation. It is about conspiracy theories that quite frankly confuse people um, and that could pose a threat to the people of this country. This puts politics over science and it put politics over, uh, it, and it makes sure, it, it makes sure, it doesn't put politics over science. It puts science over politics. Um, I don't want anything in this bogus bill to be used to diminish CDC's authority to respond to public health emergencies in the future. The purpose of, this, uh, of the CDC is to prevent the spread of disease in this country, and we should let them do their job. I urge a yes vote, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Massachusetts reserves. For what purpose does the gentleman from Indiana seek recognition? I rise in opposition to the amendment. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. This legislation is targeted to COVID-19 and has nothing to do with other diseases. Further, CDC does not have clear authority to mandate vaccin vaccination requirements. The order referenced in this legislation is implementing a presidential proclamation and not a standing authority that CDC has. Further, almost every single one of CDC's overreaches in authority have been challenged. CDC is still fighting their ability for their ability to require masks in public transit stations in court. They're still fighting that. Why would we adopt this amendment and signal that, signal that we have authority to mandate, that they have authority to mandate vaccinations in the future? I urge a no vote on this amendment, and now I yield to the primary sponsor of the underlying legislation, Mr. Massey. The gentleman is recognized. I thank the gentleman from Indiana. Uh, I find it somewhat ironic that the other side is complaining about the process during the debate on the amendment that the other side gets to offer by virtue of our decision in the Rules Committee to open up this process. Uh, so this is the process. Uh, the, the gentleman from Indiana is correct. It is not a given. It's not been established that the CDC has this authority. There's no need for us to legislate beyond the intent of this bill. The intent of this bill is to eliminate uh, a, a presidential order about a COVID vaccine for international travelers. There's no need for us in this bill to try and, and give the CDC additional authority. In fact, the, 
the bill is quiet on whether they have this authority, and that's a, that's a subject that's being debated in the courts right now. Uh, I also want to point out that the order, as well as the gentleman's amendment, doesn't apply to immigrants. The, the order that the president's put in, in place on visitors doesn't it apply to illegal immigrants to this United States, and neither would this gentleman's amendment. So I think when you talk about science and logic, why is it that somebody who's coming here legally uh, would be more of a threat than somebody who's coming here illegally. And so uh, with that, I urge a no on the amendment and a, and a yes on the bill, but mostly a, uh, certainly a no on this amendment. And I yield back to Jim. I yield. The gentleman from Indiana yields. The gentleman from Massachusetts is uh, Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman, I'm just asking, um, urging that uh, we clarify that the anti-vax rhetoric we hear on the other side of the aisle uh, doesn't apply to other vaccines beyond COVID. COVID. There's a trust issue here. I'll give you an example. Last night, uh, when the president asked that the Republicans not vote to cut Social Security and Medicare, you all said you weren't going to do that. And yet, we look today, we see statements from people like Senator Mike Lee, who said that his objective is to phase out Social Security, to pull it up by the roots and get rid of it. The Republican Study Committee released a budget that calls for privatizing Social Security and raising the eligibility ages for Social Security and Medicare. We have had Senator Lindsey Graham suggest that raising the age for Social Security and cutting benefits for senior, seniors while making them pay more. I go on it. Rick Scott introduced a bill that would sunset Social Security. So there's a trust issue. And quite frankly, um, in order for me to agree with the gentleman, I would have to forget everything that I heard in the Rules Committee last night. So this simply says that your anti-vax rhetoric does not apply to other, um, uh, you know, other, uh, other health emergencies and other vaccines. This is about protecting the safety and well-being uh, of the people of this country. And again, if you had a hearing and if you brought the CDC head up and asked these questions, maybe we'd all feel a little bit more comfortable. But you're rushing this to the floor because you're looking for a soundbite, you're looking for a moment on Tucker Carlson or whatever, or more Twitter followers or whatever. We're interested in le responsible legislating. So we would appreciate um, a reassurance that, in fact, your anti-vax rhetoric doesn't apply to other vaccines. And with that, I yield back my time.